Well, hey there, welcome back. There are many reasons why famous movie characters might have to be remade in other countries, whether it's because of a law, religious reasons, or um, because they were straight up stolen. Go ahead, think about your favorite movie character. Yep, they're probably on this list, and trust me, they look and act completely differently outside of North America. Here are 10 famous movie characters remade in foreign countries. Number 10 is Batman. They remade me in other countries. I don't like it. Because of controversial copyright laws, several iconic movie characters were unofficially adapted for Turkish cinema. And one of the most famous was the Dark Knight himself. Known as the Turkish Batman, Yurasa Adam was filmed in 1966 and featured a low rent Batman and Robin going against a seedy underworld. And seedy is the right word because when the dynamic duo aren't out fighting crime, they spend most of their time hanging out at a strip club. Mm, you see that Robin? Gee, well Batman. Throughout the film, the famous crime fighting team are depicted as voyeuristic womanizers. But hey, at least the Turkish Batman and Robin are able to take down an evil crime organization. That's good, right? The film was clearly made to capitalize on the popularity of the 1960s American Batman starring Adam West, except it was, you know, a hundred times more cringy. For all the youngins out there that don't know, Adam West was the same Adam West that appeared on Family Guy. So put the two and two together, just put a Batman mask on him, same guy. Number nine is Freddy Krueger. This movie's sure to be a nightmare. The Bollywood film industry in India is huge and one of the most successful film industries in the world. Their films are often musicals, but while Bollywood has a vast amount of original films, occasionally they remake a well-known character or film from Hollywood. In fact, in 1993, Bollywood reinterpreted one of horror's greatest villains, Freddy Krueger. The film is called Mahakal and just like Krueger's Nightmare on Elm Street, follows a group of students being killed in their sleep by a mysterious man with hideous scars and blades for fingers. No, not Edward Scissorhands, the other guy. The man's name is Shakal, a child killer who was buried alive by a local police chief years previous. But unlike A Nightmare on Elm Street, Mahakal shifts drastically between a horror and comedic tone, but that's all part of the Bollywood charm. Number eight is King Kong. King Kong has often been parodied, but in 1976, the giant gorilla was the subject of an unofficial remake. The film was a Korean release and was simply called Ape. Imaginative title there, guys. Anyway, the film was put together quickly so that it could be released at the same time as the official American remake of King Kong. Ape has King Kong fight a giant great white shark, a huge python, and an entire army. What else could you want? Well, what you'd probably want is a bigger effects budget. <laughs> oh boy. It's reported that the film's entire effects budget was just $1,200 and it shows. But interestingly, Ape wasn't the original title for the film. It was actually called The New King Kong. But when the studio who was making the real Kong remake caught wind of this, they sued the makers of The New King Kong who then quickly renamed the film. Given the budget for the film, I wouldn't be surprised if they just backspaced on a typewriter, printed it out and just put it over the lens. New title, everyone. <laughs> Number seven is Vito Corleone. Francis Ford Coppola's 1972 classic The Godfather is seen by many as a perfect film. It often appears on critics' top 10 lists, so it takes some guts to even think about remaking such a masterpiece. But that's exactly what happened in 2005 when the Indian film Sarkar retreads some of the characters and plot of the original film. Marlon Brando's legendary performance as Vito Corleone, the head of the Corleone crime family in The Godfather, was recreated by someone completely different in the remake. Now, while many would expect such an attempt to be a failure, it was highly regarded by critics on release. What made the film special was that it took the most important elements of characters, like Vito Corleone, and then infused them with Indian culture, doing something different with the source material. Let me guess, when they're sitting around eating dinner instead of spaghetti in the made the ball, they're gonna have chaat papri and chicken tikka masala. Delish. Number six is Rambo. 
1986, an Indonesian film company produced an unofficial remake of Rambo called The Intruder. Just like the Stallone-helmed action series, it starred a muscular hero hell-bent on wiping out his enemies. However, some elements were changed. Hey, y'all, like, what did they do? The title character is called Rambu rather than Rambo and is a former police officer who decides to become a vigilante when his wife is killed by a murderous gang. Along the way, Rambu dispatches his enemies in a variety of entertaining ways, including using the deadliest of weapons, the racquetball. Rambu is played by New Zealand actor Peter O'Brien, who managed to have a successful action career in Indonesia before retiring from films altogether to teach English. It's a shame they didn't adapt that into a film. I definitely would have watched the hell out of Rambo, the teacher years. Number five is Quint. Another unofficial remake, the Italian film Great White, attempted to recapture the fear and profits of Steven Spielberg's 1977 classic Jaws. The film all but stole the entire plot, setting, and characters of the original movie. So much so that Universal successfully sued the production and had it taken out of theaters. Just like in Jaws, there's a great white shark terrorizing a coastal town. In Jaws, you have Quint, played by Robert Shaw, but Quint also appears in Great White, White, this time his name is Ron Hammer and he's played by Vic Morrow. As you would imagine, both characters are seasoned sailors and both have spent their lives hunting sharks. But despite Vic Morrow's heroic efforts, Rob Hammer is a pale imitation of the legendary Quint and the film Great White has largely been forgotten. Number 4 is Mad Max. Mad Max was famously played by both Mel Gibson and Tom Hardy, but hey, there's no need to stop there! There's another unofficial remake on the horizon, and Mad Max is kind of the central character. I say kind of because the lead character is called Mad Sheila, a character which borrows from Fury Road's Mad Max and Furiosa. Like Fury Road, Mad Sheila takes place in a desert wasteland where Sheila has to protect a group of women from a tyrannical warlord. Not only does Mad Sheila recreate the characters and plot points from Fury Road, but it even copies the marketing materials. Many of the posters are exactly the same as Mad Max Fury Road and have been clearly designed to exploit the Chinese market's desire for big budget action films. Number three is Spider-Man. Yo, there's like 17 Spider-Mans at this point. We don't need another one in foreign countries. It's just too much. Spider-Man is one of the most popular superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but way before Tom Holland took on the role, there was a bizarre version of the character fighting crime on the big screen in 1978. It took place in Italy and he shot spaghetti out of his arms. Just kidding, just making sure you're still paying attention. Set in Japan, Spider-Man has to defeat the dreaded Iron Cross Army, who are using a mechanical underwater monster which can shoot missiles from its mouth to destroy oil tankers. Luckily, anyone familiar with the comics knows that Spider-Man has a massive mech robot at his disposal, which regularly fights giant monsters. On second thoughts, maybe I missed that issue. The film plays fast and loose with the source material in general, with Spider-Man being a motorcycle racer called Taku who's injected with alien blood from the last survivor of Planet Spider. I swear to God I'm not making this stuff up. Yeah, that's not bad. Personally, I think we should go back to my idea, Italian Spider-Man. You want to get to this? Forget! Number two is Winnie the Pooh. Disney wasn't the only company to adapt the Winnie the Pooh series by A.A. A. Milne. In fact, in 1969, a Russian animation company made their own cartoon feature film following the adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Unlike the Disney versions, the character of Christopher Robin was completely removed from the story, and Pooh was made the main character. Oh gosh, Christopher Robin, I'm the star now! You like that impression? Yes, you're welcome. While the cartoon has much simpler animation, it won a number of awards in the US SSR and even spawned two subsequent feature-length sequels. In the Russian version, Winnie the Pooh is far more determined than the gentler Disney interpretation, and with some impressionistic backgrounds, it can take a little time to get used to this version of the story. That being said, the Russian version still retains the charm of the original stories. And number one is Superman. 
The original Superman films were so popular in the late 70s and early 80s that one of them was remade in Turkey. Affectionately known as Turkish Superman, its actual title is The Return of Superman and was filmed as an unofficial follow-up to the original 1978 outing. Though a sequel of sorts, Turkish Superman retells some of Superman's origin story, but without the Hollywood budget. Yeah, the planet Krypton, for example, looks suspiciously like a Christmas ornament. Again, I'm not kidding, folks. This, you can't make this stuff up. For much of the film, Clark Kent works at the Istanbul Daily Planet, but when organized crime rears its ugly head, he transforms into the superhero that we all know and love. Well, a superhero that looks a bit like the hero that we all know and love. He's a hilarious alternate version of Superman whose greatest weakness is apparently being hit by a chair. Yeah, that's just sad. I think I'm done with his list. So 10 famous movie characters that were remade in foreign countries, but let me know in the comments, would you guys watch any of these films? Personally, as silly as they are, I would actually want to watch at least some of them because I just kind of want to see just how bad they are. Anyway, see you in the next video.